Hey everybody, welcome to the paint stream. It's me, John, and I'm, I'm joined here uh, with a flanking Joe. Hey. And then also Fox is uh, right next to me working on some art projects as well. So I am here and the name of the game is putting the finishing touches on models. Um, so this is usually, like especially a lot on the stream, I'll start a mini, do a couple of like streams on it, and then not really have the time uh, to follow through and finish it. So on this stream, uh, I will be doing my best to knock out some models I started a while ago um, on this broadcast that aren't quite finished yet. Um, and I'll be going over the processes with that. Um, so as of right now, I'm working on the Gatorman Soul Slave from War Machine and Hordes. And I am doing a black wash over the metallics, the um, the silver metallics that I have on the model. One, this is going to darken it, and it's also going to be building a uh, differentiation between um, where the metallics end and where the skin starts. So it's a really important step to do. And also washes in general will kind of tie stuff together. And this will let me know also where I need to add more shadows or highlights, especially when it's concerned on the uh, metallic front. So as I'm working on this, I have other models in the pipeline. Um, I just fixed up one of my um, croak solos and I have a couple others like ready to go. So um, as soon as I'm satisfied with the washes that I have on the metallics, I'll be moving over to the next model online while this is drying, keeping as efficient as possible on my minis. Um, I know I preach this a lot, but you have a lot of minis in queue, it will save you a lot of trouble um, later on. So, uh, black wash is down, so let's move on to the next thing. Um, and we are going to go over to the uh, Bog Trog, uh, Bog Trog Mist Speaker that I've had for a bit, and it will be uh, starting on. This guy, he has a lot of bone features on his uh, model that need to be brought up. So it's currently just sitting with a wash. You can kind of see where it is very dark and it is very close to the rest of the model. Um, you can also see that there's a couple of chips on the model. And that's why I have a little thing of black primer, paint on primer right next to me. So I can reapply to the area and touch that up later once I get to that step. So, uh, building up the bone, I'm going to start with Menoth White Base, and we're going to move up slowly through, uh, all the way up to like a Menoth White Highlight slash Sickly Green to really get those details to pop open. Um, you don't want to make sure, or you want to make sure that your uh, your paints are thin, especially for this this step of the process, because uh, a thick paint will really look tacky, like, and not like the, like, phrase tacky, but like, um, actually, like, you can see, like, the brush strokes in the model and all that, and that's not super cool. And I just got myself one of those clippers. You yeah, just got got those are nice one. ones, yeah. So uh, I'm going to be using my Windsor Newton Double Zero with a thinned down Menoth White base. And this is gonna be kind of like a, a little test to see if the highlight is a little too drastic or if it's just fine. And at least on the smaller bones, it's looking just fine. And this is gonna be a big step in really tying this model together and making it look more done. Um, so I'm working on his fish stick. And it is Uh, it is a, a totem made of several fish bones, and I absolutely love it. Hey, Ross. Thanks for popping into the stream.
So this particular step will be probably a little bit more labor intensive than a lot of the other ones. And also this is where you probably want to have one of those things that you can hold your model on so you don't rub off the paint on primer you just did. Uh, oh, hey, Chris. Thanks for stopping by. So uh, it's probably going to be too difficult to see from the camera, but there are like lines of striation on some of the bigger bones, and I'm going to be doing my best to follow those um, while also keeping true to brightening up these things so they really pop against the, um, the darker cloak that he has. I really wanted to make sure that this this misspeaker was um, a little darker than my other bog trogs, which have a tendency to be on the fluorescent side of things. So uh, it is really uh, interesting for me to move to a muted palette because uh, I generally like bright colors because it's my aesthetic. I'm going to continue chopping up and cutting up these eggs. Uh, fire slayers. Yeah. Yeah, so Joe's still working on assembling his fire slayers for Age of Sigmar League. And I do have my uh, engine master right next to me. Um, so I'll be working on him once I get to a stopping point on my minions models. So, yeah. The misspeaker is real fun. I actually really enjoy this model. I might eventually get a second one, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be down for painting like two back to back. It seems like a lot of work. So how did the, uh, the Underworld release go? Oh, it went really well. We had a lot of people here for the um, Night Vault release, uh, Underworld Season 2. Um, it was really good to see everyone kind of like popping out for it. I, yeah, I even had a, there was a couple customers that came in and saw to get into it as well. Just picked up a couple more. Uh, like the Skeleton Squad they had from the first uh, season. Yeah. So. The Sepulchral Guard. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I'm really excited, uh, especially since uh, next time I'll be on stream won't be till the, oh, what is it? Is it the 18th? Yeah, I'll, I'll be out next week. Um, but when I get back on the 18th, I'll probably be painting my Zinch Warband from uh, Underworlds. That's okay. super exciting. Now, did they come out with another draw faction for it? Yeah, um, sorry, question on the stream. Uh, Chris, if you ever want a demo or a run through of uh, Monster Apocalypse, let me know. Um, I can schedule one. Um, even if I need to drive out to you, I'll do it. Um, but it is a really fun game, um, and I've enjoyed it a lot. It's nice and simple enough to where like, people who don't have a lot of tabletop experience can get into it. But there is like enough depth in the core rules, so you can really like expand um, what you can do. Like you know, your game knowledge will definitely benefit you. You'll be able to see like new tactics and abilities and things like that popping up. Um, so now, I've really enjoyed it. Now we do have a couple of new expansions coming out, right? Yeah. So those all drop uh, the twelfth, and that's right before our first Monpok tournament on the thirteenth. Okay. Um, so we have. Uh, Zor Maxim. So we basically have the Shadow Sun Syndicate, which was what uh, Chris was talking about, uh, the Shinobi faction. And these are a group of guys who are very close to Ultraman. Um, if you know that particular like IP. Okay. Um, and uh, so they're basically guys in super armor that can increase their size and ability. And they all have like martial arts and ninja training to make them really powerful hand-to-hand -hand combatants, uh, which is really useful when you're fighting against giant aliens or uh, monsters from the uh, outer realms. Um, 
or Martians. Or a Pacific Rim. Yeah. Uh, so it is... They're a cool faction, and they're also kind of like the... Um, um, oh, anti-hero of the hero factions. Okay. Uh, because they're not really in it for saving humanity. They want to basically benefit themselves. They want to find new resources to exploit okay. and uh, gain clout uh, like amongst the world uh, world factions. Fame and glory. Yeah. Uh, more, more like fame and money. <laughs> fame and money. Yeah. Who cares about the glory? Just give me the fame and money. Yeah, so um, it's really cool uh, just simply because they do have that like anti-hero like uh, um anti-hero vibe to them okay um but they also have like some really strong aesthetics aesthetics uh close to older like cartoons and live action stuff yeah yeah, yeah. i saw a picture of the new robot it looks like a ninja doesn't it with blades on the arms? yeah yeah that, that's what we're talking about that's or maxim yeah um he's really awesome he's super mobile mm -hmm. and he's kind of able to position himself around the map which is awesome um uh, Shadow Sun, uh, among the other ones, probably are the most shenanigans y faction for the heroes, the, the protectors. Where um, destroyers are about defense, or sorry, not destroyers, guard is about defense and holding objectives, where um, the pterosaurs are all about uh, offensively minded and wrecking stuff up. So it's really cool. Yeah, I like the uh, the first expansion of the, the, the like the mini expansion they got for when the corset came out. The yeah. small tanks, I like that design for some reason. So really excited about that. How do the small units uh, come into play with this game? Um, so they are there to hold objectives and secure zones to help reinforce your monster. Okay. Um, so I've played several games um, already. Uh, I'd love to play more, but it is. It's really interesting how quickly units can uh, affect the game and the pacing of it um, due to just what they're able to control or what your opponent has to invest with removing them. So uh, it's really hard to explain over it, but uh, units are really essential to any game and you've got to be careful when you're choosing what units to bring with you what they're going to do to benefit your list. Okay. Um, so, yeah, uh, Shadow Sun's going to be a little bit more fragile than the other factions. Um, it's actually really interesting uh, because I would say probably Pterosaurs are more glass cannon um, overall than uh, Shadow Sun. Uh, Shadow Sun at least has a lot of like escape and shenanigans to them that can prevent your opponent from um, really kind of like wailing into them. Like Zor Maxim has the teleport rule, so you can basically uh, use that to teleport friendly units next to them to prevent enemy models from really getting too close, which is strong. Um, it's pretty good. Yeah, very hit and run. Um, and so as of right now, if you're playing like a full game, you'll need two monsters, Chris. So that means you'll have to branch out and like either try Pterosaurs or Guard. Um, but there will be uh, a second of uh, Shadow Sun coming eventually. It's just not uh, known exactly when. Sometime in the new year. Uh, I think they said they wanted to have everything for wave one out in the first six months. Um, but you know, production schedules do change and uh, I'm sorry, I'm painting off stream. Um, production schedules change and all that, so uh, they may or may not be able to stick to the initial plan, but we'll, we'll find out. They'll, they'll do their solicitations. The big key will be um, what comes out in January. So. So they're gonna have good. So this is Monster Apocalypse still. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The dinosaur faction. Yep. Dinosaurs come out in um, 
December, so it's going to be a very good Christmas for me. <laughs> no, I can't think of a better way to, to spread the Christmas chill than to fight giant monsters versus giant monsters. Yeah. Merry Christmas to all. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about um, the pterosaurs coming. Uh, they were always one of my favorite factions, especially for the original Monpok. So I'm super hyped to see them come back in all of their glory. Now, can this uh, game be like for four players too? Can yeah, yeah. So um, even in the main rulebook, there's a four-player scenario uh, listed. Uh, so 100% okay to play with up to four. Um, I don't think we have any scenarios for above that. Um, but... I really like the fact that they're planning ahead and such. Yeah, me too. I like I like the idea of having a full play because you can always have that robot and dinosaur faction. This is the other two ones that are coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a Martian faction coming out, which is all like saucers and tripods and things <laughs> like that. And the pterosaurs are the last two factions, uh, at least for this first wave. Like a marvel Martian. What was the kaboom? It's supposed to be an earth shattering kaboom. <laughs> so, uh, but those guys are, uh, they're coming in December time. Uh, the cool thing is uh, definitely the buildings that are dropping in November, because that'll really kind of change up the, uh, the gameplay a lot. Because uh, right now, all we have is uh, apartment buildings that come in the starter box. Mm -hmm. And those are good, but they don't have really any special rules associated with them, which is fine especially for people just like learning the game uh, but when they start adding in those like special mechanics and rules it really adds depth to the uh, the experience yeah. now you had a chance to paint one of the models mm -hmm. how did that go what, what, how, how did you find that experience to um, I liked it there was a lot more um, oh I had to do a lot more like sub assemblies than I thought I was going to with mm -hmm. Defender X um, and then I'm still like trying to get over uh, or figure out if I'm painting the bases or not on each one. Okay. So it'll be it'll be kind of interesting to to see which way I decide to go on it. Now, do you have any tips for people who want to paint their monsters, seeing how you you done it or done Yeah. So um, they're nice big models. Okay. So they take well to a couple of different techniques. Um, the big one is obviously like. Uh, they work great for layering and washing and all that sort of like traditional stuff, but um, if you guys have an airbrush and want to experiment with it, uh, they'll take to airbrushing exceptionally well. Um, and I would probably, I would probably start off airbrushing my monsters from now on, because um, I found that it's really effective. Um, but uh, besides that, it's it's a lot of smooth flat panels, at least on Defender X. Um, the well, I guess with um, Gorgadra as well. Gorgadra also has a bunch of um, flat panels that would probably take pretty well to an airbrush. Um, I think you can get by dry brushing on like a Thugrush and. Um, Terracon when they come out, but these models have like such a cool design to them where I feel like they would do very, very well with uh, a very little bit of uh, airbrush love. Now, how long does the game usually take with this? Um, a single monster game usually will run between like 20 and 30 minutes. Uh, a dual monster game will probably be closer to 45 to an hour. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. It just kind of depends on um, how knowledgeable people are. Like, so obviously doing like a one monster game tutorial, um, if we were doing like the full thing, it would take probably 45 minutes or so. Um, yeah, I, I enjoy my games to be close to within an hour, maybe an hour and a half. Unless yeah. it's like, an, like a, a, an event, like uh, for example, um, Fear of Dracula, this can go up to three hours. Yeah. It's actually new reprints coming out. We have a actually cover coming in, so. Yeah. I don't know exactly when that's gonna come out, but it, it takes about three hours to 
uh, play at that game, but really fun. So then, and, and, but I really enjoyed the ones that are like, you know, uh, short time, an hour, an hour and a half, like I said. So that's my like my time limit. So it sounds fun. Yeah. So yeah, just slowly keep working on the um, <coughs> the bone parts on here. It's a lot of bone. It, it was a step I was dreading, so being on stream helps me stay focused and, you know, knock it out as opposed to keep putting it off. Now is that the, uh, that's, that's called a uh, war hammer, right? Nope, this is War Machine. War Machine. This okay. is part of the uh, Gator faction that I play in War Machine. Wow. And he is a misspeaker, so he is a, uh, a shaman of the swamp. That's interesting. Who would have thought the shrimps would need shamans? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Definitely needed. Mm. I also need exact, exact, do you have an exact no knife? Tool? I did not bring any of my modeling tools with me today. Yeah. I just brought my paints. Okay. I'm sure there's one in the van here somewhere. Um, Chris, it changes up pretty frequently what I do for, for making my own bone. Um, Usually it's going to be, I'll usually start pretty dark. Um, like I think I did uh, Hammerfall khaki mixed with like, um, I'm gonna say it was like an umbral umber wash. And then uh, I'm coming back with men off white base to, to kind of bring it up. Um, I think I could probably have started more in a mid-tone and just done a wash that will, um, you know, not be as strong as the one that I used, but I really like the the deep darks, especially since like this this bone staff has a lot of texture to it, um, and I really wanted to make sure that everything kind of like popped and was looking its best. But um, I will basically do bent off white highlight um, mixed with either like some sickly skin or marrow white for the final highlight when I get up to that one. I mean, it just kind of depends on the effect. This guy has a lot of greens on him already, so I might skip the sickly green, and I might do something like frostbite and marl white just to give like a little cool edge, um, or maybe even uh, do something like really warm and mix like a little bit of um, like bloodstone or something like that into it. Um, also to keep the browns as strong as they are. Just really depends um, on what I'm feeling like the model needs, uh, but with how how dark uh, this model is overall, I'll probably be trying to push that that bone up really, really light. So, yeah. I like mixing a lot of colors, so my formulas don't really stay uh, super consistent because I'll try to match it with the motif and the feel of the model. Um, so some days my bone might be lots of greens, like I've started with like Ordic Olive before and gone up that way, or I've even done um, some other like colors, like I've done some like cool blue bone um, just because I thought it would match the mini pretty well so I hope that's helpful but usually like I will tell folks you can make most things like appear like you want without necessarily using the colors that you think it should have um, just, just using like a little bit of color theory and playing with stuff, um, I find it helps a lot. You know, it strengthens creativity. So I'm doing a little bit of edge highlighting on the staff, so I'm basically getting some thinned down paint on my brush. 
and dragging along the uh, edges at a 45 degree angle. So only the tips or the edges are getting highlighted. And now I am going in and I'm doing basically like a little bit of freehand, um, so to speak, and kind of adding in some bone striations to really make it look bone-like. Back to edge highlighting. It's really important to have good light. Luckily the paint stations here at Gigabytes have sufficient light for doing a lot of this like technical stuff. Um, also I really like working at Gigabytes on my paint because I know exactly how it's going to look when it gets on the table because I'm painting it under the same light. So coming back to some of the men off white highlight, since I have it thinned down a lot, it doesn't get fully opaque unless I do several steps of it, so doing several steps will kind of bring up some highlights and such. So yeah. Let's see. All right, we're going to have to move to the other side of the fish stick, or whatever they're calling it these days. So there's a lot of like wrapping and thin, thin kind of uh, bands and things like that, that I'm going to have to make a decision on whether or not I want it to, what color I want to paint it, because it could easily go one way or another in terms of uh, shading and all that. So once again... We're coming through here, and we're doing a combination of freehanding some striations in, and doing some edge highlighting. But yeah, I'm excited uh, to get this guy fully painted so I can run him at uh, Crucible coming up. Uh, this weekend, next weekend, excuse me. I'd like to play fully painted or as much as humanly possible. Um, so I'm kind of in a mad dash to uh, get several models done. So yeah, I hope everyone else is working on some cool stuff. Yeah, I wish we were, were able to make it. I actually was originally not able to make it um, up until recently. And so um, that was a pleasant change. So the men off white base was getting a little thin, so working on it, refreshing it. So the thinner paints definitely help with uh, doing freehand stuff. If you ever notice, I mean, it's one thing to be cognizant of when you're working on your models to uh, 
make sure you keep the paints nice and thin. Um, it will also help you from like being a little too stark on like a highlight or something like that. If it's thin enough, it'll kind of be translucent enough to where enough of the base color shows through so it won't appear as drastic. So, got the bone done on him. So now, going to do a little bit of men off white highlight and. I'm going to do sickly skin. Sickly skin's a little bit more on the cool green side of things. Alright, got that mix done. And this should be a pretty I'm back. Hooray. Yay. I had a journey. I learned a lot. I gained a token or something like that. Still don't know how it works, but I'll figure it out. So, let's see here. Oh, this looks, this looks interesting. This is fun. So is that is that War Machine uh, tournament in Saint was it Miss, Miss Saint Louis was it? Uh, that's War Machine weekend that's in Saint Louis. Yeah, when is that? Uh, that is the first weekend of November. Oh, nice. Um, I'm going down to Crucible next weekend though, uh, which is in Orlando. Okay. How long can be there? Um, I will be down there. Um, I'm basically leaving Thursday and coming back up. Uh, Sunday night, so just a couple of days. Road trip. Yep. I kind of want to go to uh, Cape Canaveral, take my dad there. He's a big NASA guy, so think about yeah. doing that. And then my, my mom would love to go to uh, Universal Studio and visit Di Diagon Alley down yeah. there. Yeah. So that would be fun for her. So, but, you know, that's what I like to do for all of it. And maybe go to the beach and the ocean out. Yeah, that's good. Um, Orlando's kind of like in the center of the state, so it's really easy to like get around mm -hmm. and do a bunch of different things while you're down there. So, um, I, I do recommend it. I actually was watching a documentary about speed training and like it's the speed, the bullet train in Japan. Mm -hmm. I thought to myself, I wonder, you know, how we how we could incorporate a bullet train in a state. Um, like how, how would that how would that work? Do we have like a central hub and it just spans out in the city? 
like a lantern that spans out and goes to different directions? That is a good question. Uh, I do not have any background in uh, engineering or trains or anything like that. So, I unfortunately am not a great. Well, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure we can always, you know, one can always speculate, right? Yeah. I think it'd be kind of cool to have a centralized uh, bullet train that takes you just to all the, uh, this, all the places in, in, in like the fall. I mean, how, well, actually, question: How long would it? Do you know how long it takes a bullet train to get to? I don't. No. Okay. I had to like a that up. So it was fascinating, actually. What about that motion makes it easier? And we also saw a documentary about a s about roller coasters, a specific one, which was really fascinating about how, what they all do to uh, make sure that thing's safe and runs function and functions properly. But anyway, yeah. So once once I get through all the bone, I can start coming in and doing the uh, little bands that are around around this little guy. Um, but I'll probably take a break on him once the bone is done and start move over to either the Soul Slave or uh, Mr. Quack Slick Spine and Gub. Ah, these axes look so nice. Mm. So. Oh man, these fire slaves are going to look so nice once they, they get them axed. Oh, they get them painted. Yeah, abso so, abs absolutely. Maybe that would maybe be something I'll, do, I'll be doing on my, uh, the next time I'm on page, paint stream. Yeah. Like, we'll be, we'll be Joe's gonna be learning how to paint fire slayers. Yeah, and don't forget, guys, that Sean Twitty does have a painting class coming up towards the end of the uh, middle of the month, excuse me. Yes. Um, we are still taking sign ups. Um, it is going over skin tones and faces and all that stuff that a lot of people usually struggle with. Um, take it from me if you guys uh, have any issues with those particular things treat yourself to this class it will definitely definitely assist you yeah painting can be a very relaxing yeah. hobby a very yeah. fun, a rewarding one too I, I mean I find it I find it definitely both for me I mean you're basically just taking something that is not painted and you're adding vibrant to it vibrantness to it and creativity to it it's just fantastic yeah. So, and I think about doing with these fire slayers. I think about doing the first, just do the default colors in the mm -hmm. that you find in the back here. Just put, and just practice my techniques. Yeah, absolutely. I always recommend, especially if you like the core colors. Games Workshop makes it really easy to follow their guides and uh, paint things like their templates, and it is very good, especially for beginner and novice painters because it takes a lot of the color theory work out of it which is uh, sometimes like a barrier of entry to some folks because you know you spend too long thinking about how to make a color or what you want your paint scheme to be and if you just go with the default one a lot of the work is already done for you yeah so anyway Hmm. Really, look, really looking forward to it. Uh, but now to cut these things off and just get them glued on and then primed. Now you suggest um you and Twitty uh, Sean suggested that I use white primer. Just, yeah, primer. Um, that's really good, especially if you're doing something uh, wholly in skin tones, because um, it takes the washing really well. Mm -hmm. um, and washing is where you're just going to layer a very thin paint over the model. Okay. And uh, it, it does a lot to um, complete a skin tone for you in a very short amount of time. All right. So, okay. Well, that will be my next objective after I get all this 
Take them outside and climb them. Now, it, is there a specific weather that's best for climbing? Um, you want... Uh, fall time is actually one of the best seasons for um, priming okay. uh, because the humidity is down and the temperature is a little bit cooler. Mm -hmm. You don't want um, weather that's frigid, but if you have something between 80, like, like you know, mid 80s and mid 70s with no humidity, um, that is the best time to do it. Um, now, what does that do with the paint when it's cooler? Um, when it's cooler, like you have a chance of the the paint like condensing as it's traveling through, or like the humidity um, catching the water through the air as it's traveling to the model, um, and that can cause some effects that you may not want with your model, like fuzzing or causing the paint to be um, pool in area or the primer to pool in areas that you don't necessarily want. Okay. So. Yeah. All right. Nice. All that stuff's kind of a, a, a big, a big issue um, when it comes to uh, the models itself. How many trials and errors did people have to go through before they discovered all this stuff? How um, like I think actually a fair like a lot um, is the easiest way. Uh, just just a lot. Uh, it, it is a lot of work um, in terms of painting models uh, in general because the scale of detail is so small that it becomes very easy to destroy detail with just a little bit of something going wrong. So. This just amazes me how it's all the, t all the time that people put into fine tuning or discovering how to play music or what note was best or how to play this note and that note. And how, and how people just probably, I don't know how people just probably sat around and just, you know. Trial and error, man. Yeah. That is, that's always fascinated me how that happened. So in the process of fixing a lot of errors or chipping that happened on this model before I had a chance to finish him. So he's probably the closest to being done, but I really want to make sure that I finish um, all of his details and such. So I did some paint on primer to cover up the chips. And now I'm coming back in with the base coat, and I'll do a little bit of highlighting once it sets. Um. Now, would you suggest somebody prime and paint the pieces separately? Um, it, so it's personal preference, um, and it really comes down to what you're comfortable with. I like assembling much of the models a, a, as much as possible. Um, because one of the issues that I have with sub-assemblies is that when I put it together, sometimes there's a little bit of a, a like a seam that I didn't see before in the okay. model um, that I have to then uh, fix when uh, you know it is time to like put it together, mm -hmm. and that really kind of bums me out uh, a fair bit. All right. Okay, holy small pieces. Alright, fine tune decision. Yes, yes it is. But again, the product is worth it. Coming in and fixing a little bit on his cow. Fisks. It is like building Legos, isn't it? Was that? It is like building Legos, isn't it? Yeah. So. Look at these things. They are, but it's becoming closer and closer to completion. So, when do, when
Wait, do we have a space fire tournament or um, so Mondays are the Shade Spire Day. Okay. And I really recommend it for anyone who is looking to get into the game um, or interested in even just kind of learning what it's about. Um, but we'll do organized play every so often on the weekends, whether it's like a tournament or like last weekend, which was a launch event. Um, it just kind of depends on what's coming up and what people are interested in. Um, so yeah. I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna have to probably. I'm gonna have to enter in some of those. Try out my new uh, deck of uh, fire slayer jewels. Yeah, absolutely. So. Now, there's one faction coming out that you're in, that you. That you yeah, the with. the Zinch, Zinch, the Zinch guys. So, are they fish guys or? They are. It's a mix of several different factions together. Um, okay. It is demons. Right. Um, Demons, Zangors, which are bird people, um, a Magister, which is kind of a mix between a human and a demon, and then a uh, Carrick Acolytes, which are human mages. Okay. No lizards or anything? No lizards. Okay. Well, lizards are its own faction. Not yet, though. Those are probably coming soon. Right? Yeah, they'll, they'll be re released eventually um, as, as the game progresses and moves forward. And, of course, you, you'll be, be buying that pack. Oh, absolutely. Lizardmen. So, waiting for the blue to dry on the frog, I come in and do some bone highlighting on the soul slate. And then the next step I'll really need to do is probably come in and do the flames on him just because uh, it's really kind of like an eye-catching feature of this model and then it'll definitely help me kind of move forward with the other details and such um, as I'm going forward with this guy um, but right now I'm taking a little bit of that like super bright bone highlight from the mist speaker and I'm applying it in areas in which I need to bring the bone up or maybe areas where I've nicked some bone with another color that I wasn't intending. But yeah, the rope's going to be a big step on this guy just because it connects a lot of the models together. Uh, Got it. <laughs> he believed he was going to do it. Oops. All right. So we started a little early, so we're probably going to take off a little early just because I got some stuff to take care of here at the store. Um, and I am getting close to... Uh, finishing some of these models, but uh, I'll be out next week. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll have a paint stream. Whether or not Joe does it is up to him. And uh, so, until then, guys, happy painting. And if you have any questions, feel free to shoot us a message at Gigabytes Cafe um, or come in and ask for John, and I'm happy to help with whatever you guys have. All right. So, until then, goodbye. Bye.